A lot of videos about autism will focus on the struggles and the challenges of being autistic, but not very many explore the perspective of someone who is married to an autistic or spends a lot of time with someone autistic and the benefits that come with it. So today, I wanna to talk about some of the cool insight that I have had into the world of autism through my 20-year relationship with my husband, Chris. And it's not just access to awesome fidget gadgets like the Neato Cube. So here are some of the best parts about being with someone who is autistic. Having a magical side, like kids. So you know how Disney is a special place for a lot of kids, but it's also a special place for a lot of adults? This is kind of like being inside the mind of someone who is autistic. It's kind of like a magical world too. A lot of times people don't get insight into that, but when you spend a lot of time with someone who is autistic, they might let you into that world. This could include the talking about new experiences, but from a totally different perspective. It could be talking about sensory details that you've never considered with totally normal events and activities that you do together. For example, going on a hike and being able to stand and pay attention to all of the things happening around you, not only what you're seeing, but also all the senses of the wind blowing, the smells. The smells are something that I personally never pay attention to. So with Chris, when I go on a hike with him, he'll actually notice all of those smells and those small subtle sounds and he'll point them out to me. And it gives a lot of insight into a whole nother realm of sensory details that I usually don't stop and pay attention to, to be honest, as someone who's non-autistic. So understanding the mind of someone with autism and also letting them share the worlds that they create within their minds is really, really special. And it's something that you can share together. And it's like having your own world and your own language for just the two of you. Something else that's great about being with someone autistic or spending a lot of time with someone autistic is learning how great their sense of humor is. So as you might have noticed from videos that you've seen with Chris, he loves to laugh, but he also loves to have fun. He can make fun of himself. He can be just really creative with the way he talks about things, his descriptions. And that's actually something I've discovered is true for a lot of people in the autistic community is they have great senses of humor. I have read lots of comments from people that just make me laugh out loud because the things they say are just very, very funny, but they also have the ability to make fun of themselves. The one thing I will say is to be open to brutal honesty at times because they're also very willing to make fun of themselves. It's also important that you have a sense of humor too and also keep things light. So being able to have fun, but also just being open to honesty because I think one of the things about being autistic is that the rules of communication in society sometimes seem a little bit different, but also seem very constraining compared to if someone autistic was able to just freely speak their minds. So for example, opinions about clothing or hairstyles or makeup or all of those kinds of things, I have to be open to the fact that Chris will sometimes let me know what he really thinks of it. And not necessarily just for me, if I'm like, oh, I'm thinking about you know ordering this particular dress or something. Chris actually will be like, why would you want that? That's that's a pretty ugly dress. <laughs> are you planning to, like, what of kind of event are you dressing up for an event to dress like you're someone out of the 1800s? It's pretty funny, but he has the ability to do that for himself too. If we go out shopping or he needs to buy something new, he also can say, wow, like this looks horrible on me. Or not even just about appearance, it's about a lot of different things. But I think just having a great sense of humor about things, especially when I think about how challenging a lot of things are for people who are autistic, it's amazing what great personalities and senses of humor they still can maintain a lot of the time. So that's also something that's really important to notice and to be appreciative of, and something that I really wish a lot more people would take the time to make sure that they still keep that light sense of humor and also the ability to have fun and laugh a lot and just you know, make fun of yourself sometimes. That's really important to keep. Another awesome thing about being with somebody who's autistic or spending a lot of time with someone autistic is realizing that they have their own unique love language. So what I mean is that, you know, a lot of times people talk about how do people show that they care about you, whether you're a friend or in a relationship. So people who are autistic who might struggle with verbalizing certain things, they also have their own unique way to show that they care and to show affection. So a couple of the ways that Chris does this is through making up nicknames 
names or having specific words that he shares with people or certain inside jokes. And that's something that's pretty common for a lot of people, but those things also still apply to people who are autistic too. Another thing will be him showing things that he can do when he has access to those kinds of supplies. So for example, Chris loves to make food while we're on vacation or we head to different grocery stores or different food items. He really likes to take the initiative to make all the meals. So we might be on a trip and uh, sometimes we're away for a little while. So we will stay at an Airbnb. We've talked about this a little bit in one of our other videos, the way that we travel. He likes to take on the role of making breakfast, lunch, and dinner and some snacks sometimes because it's a way that he can show he cares. I'm not a great cook, so this is also something that he can take charge of and make sure that we're both eating pretty well, but it is something that he doesn't necessarily have to do. It's just that he cares and he wants to show that he cares in that way. Or something else that he also likes to do is have random surprises. So rather than celebrating, you know, just during a birthday or just during certain days or specific events, Sometimes neurotypical or non-autistic people might really connect certain value to specific dates or periods of time. He likes to just randomly surprise with cards or notes or books or drawings or things to show that he's thinking of me in a variety of different ways. So for example, when we were planning our office space that we were just remodeling, one of the things that he made sure to put in there was this really nice state-of-the-art espresso machine, which is fantastic because I love coffee. But the really funny thing is Chris doesn't drink any coffee, but he also has made it so that he can be the one who makes the drinks because I haven't learned how to make drinks with the espresso machine yet. I have no idea how to use it at all. But he's been like, oh, that's okay. I can be the barista here and I can make you the drinks. And which kind do you want today? And when we go in there, he's actually like, do you want a coffee? Because it's something that he can do a small gesture to just show that he cares. I really appreciate it. I've learned to appreciate and notice the ways that he shows he cares that are not necessarily the ones that everybody else is doing. Staying home and having a night in rather than going out. I have friends and I enjoy going out sometimes, but I also really like my time to just relax, maybe watch some TV and just dress in sweatpants and keep things really casual and low key. I like that a lot too. It's really nice to know that Chris now that, especially after he was diagnosed, there's a lot less pressure to plan things and to go out and do specific things. So Chris is actually totally fine and probably happier a lot of the times when we decide not to go out. But I didn't ever know that before he was diagnosed. I had some idea sometimes that he didn't want to do specific things, but I didn't realize the extent to which he would probably be fine where when I asked, do you want to go and do something? He actually was interpreting it a lot of times as I want to do something so he should plan to go out, which after being able to improve our communication together, especially after he was diagnosed, it really helped to reframe the way we have those conversations. So actually being very honest with each other and transparent about, do you want to go out? No, you don't. That's totally fine for both of us. Okay, we'll stay in. Or do you want to go out when I go to eat with this friend or when I go to meet up with this person? If you don't, it's also okay and I'll just go with just them. I think those kinds of things are things that I would have taken for granted had I not paused to realize the benefits of having this kind of clear communication, but also that the expectations are pretty low key and pretty adaptable to our moods. Because Chris also struggles sometimes with actually going and doing things. If there's a day when I don't feel like doing something and I'm the one canceling, I know he will never give me a hard time with that. If I decided, you know, today I don't feel like going to this specific dinner with somebody or going to hang out with this other group of people, there will be no questions asked. And <laughs> Chris will be like, okay, like let's let them know and we'll just reschedule for another time or we'll just let them know it's not gonna work out tonight. And I think that that's, Really nice to be able to have that level of honesty with each other, but also honesty with ourselves that sometimes things can be a little bit draining and socializing can be a lot. So that also is pretty awesome.
Something that is really special about having a great friendship or relationship with someone who's autistic is that they're very honest and loyal. And when I say this, if you have someone on your side that is autistic, I feel pretty confidently a lot of them would have no problems putting themselves in uncomfortable situations, but that saying that they would walk through fire for somebody, I think is pretty true for a lot of them. That, like, I think just understanding that daily life is uncomfortable very often when you are autistic, but then the fact that they will stick through with people, they will still put themselves in those situations where they know they're not necessarily going to be super comfortable with that they're going to go to events or go to parties or things like that it's because they are loyal too and the loyalty part is something that I didn't fully understand until I had spent a number of years with Chris like People will make mistakes sometimes and he might get frustrated with them, with his friends, but he still will always make time for them if they need him. It doesn't matter how long it's been since they talked to each other last. He is extremely loyal and will defend them to whoever. If they're, you know, they come up in conversation with someone else, he will always be very honest and making sure that he's got their back, like whether they're there or not. Also, if there were ever a situation when he was present there and he felt like he needed to support them with something that would be his first priority but it also goes towards his own values and ideals when he's very honest with something he's not going to agree for example with politics he's not going to agree with something just because that's a popular opinion he will talk about his own opinion but a lot of times he's not trying to dissuade anybody from thinking something specific he just has facts that have backed up his opinion and he will be honest about it so I think that that's pretty refreshing especially understanding that this person is going to be able to share opinions and be able to share ideas but not doing it just because it's popular so for example with sports teams once Chris is a sports team fan it doesn't matter if, you know, the team is losing and is doing terribly and they've traded a bunch of his favorite players. A lot of times he will still be loyal to that team. For many, many different things, he still will always stick with that. So I think that that's something that a lot of people do, but I think also it's not brought up as one of the positives sometimes of being around somebody consistently who is autistic. So I always think that's pretty great. So do you have a friend, family member, or loved one who's autistic and has amazing qualities that you'd like to share? Be sure to drop them in the comments and like this video and subscribe to our channel for more awesome videos. Yes, Chris making coffee for me, sometimes seven times a day. Good reason to keep him around.